for the first time ever, the European Le Mans series is about to get rolling for round three of the 2023 season here at Aragon. What's the start going to be like for Phil Hansen on the right of your shot? Got the car stopped nicely, did the Brit, and ahead of Nico Pino in the green and black Duquesne team car, which it's the number 30 feeding into the sequence. Then it is Rui Andrade. And Sally Yolich has got back in front of Giorgio Roda now. So That's the 34 and the 99 providing a really good race. And Roda, as we looked at the timing screen about uh, a minute or so ago, was in front. But yeah, Yolich down the inside at turn 15. A forceful manoeuvre, making sure that Giorgio couldn't continue on the track there. He oh, it was oh. contact with Nico Pino in the number 30 Duquesne car. And I need to see that from another angle, really, to, to fully realise where the cars were on the track. But did Pino not give Fassbender sufficient room on the exit there? He can't cut a break, can he? A little early still for those stops, but I suspect yeah. that's just to keep them out of the way what would become a very busy pit lane. And there's James Allen on the inside of Giorgio Roda for position to put the LMP2 car that started at the rear of the pack now ahead of all of the LMP2 Pro-Am. So James Allen up as high as seventh place overall. Sally Yolich, if that is the case, will check on the 34's times. He hit the kerb and he wanted to try and dive bomb Arnold Robin in the Aston Martin, but there's a sausage kerb there which will majorly unsettle the car. He was worried, I think, Arnold Robin was going to swing across the yeah, nose as I think well. He, so. he was trying to duck out of a move he was committed to. Not disaster, but certainly not great news. With there is Lawson to the outside of the 72 car and forced that wide at turn seven. So car 72 still with Arnold Robin oh. at the wheel. And there's big off there for Johnny Lawson, who clatters the barrier not once but twice. We were focusing in and it's also drama for the second place car overall, Rui Andrade, who's ended up in the gravel as Someone's well. Hit him, but he's, he's hit the barrier. There's damage left rear for the 43 car. And I don't think that's going much further. And the fluid absolutely yeah. pouring out of the front it's done the of front the Ferrari. Radiator. Yeah, that's, I, that, I think that's done. Let's see again what happened here. It's the 43 car, Lawson off the track, came past, and then there was a hit to the side, side to side between the Orica and the Ferrari, and it sent one car into the barrier stage right and one stage left. Hashtag blame Johnny, it's coming back to haunt me. Here's the number five car off the road as well, James Dason. He'd already been involved in the collision with John Hartson, you know, Hartson, you'll remember, and lost it with high speed coming through turns four and five and leaves the scene backwards. Oh, and straight into the gravel as well. Oh, that was a touch between the 24 and the 30. Busy in the first corner, and there's Very a spin busy. there for the number seven car from Nielsen Racing. That's Tony Wells, who had to get through the corner at some point, but there was contact from one of the two. The LMP2 Prime leader, that's the 24 car, in the hands of Ben Hanley. Sixth place overall, and what has happened there? But uh, Ben Hanley rejoins the track, but that's delayed him enough for Charlie Eastwood to take the lead. So that was a lap going on. The 81 from the fourth place car, Rennie Binder, uh, doesn't pit this time around either, and uh, he just comes through into fourth position for the moment. We are under a minute, Johnny, away from halfway through this race. Hasn't quit, has it? Back into the race goes the number 22 so Marino Sato from the race lead pitting at the end of that was a 22 lap stint shorter than Phil Hansen managed to go although was the Hansen stint yeah it had a safety car in the middle of it so that's the reason why he was able to eke out a couple of extra laps big dive this time I think he saw was more, more or less letting him go it's a very aggressive run here from Matteo Grassoni it is but uh, I think he's trying to impose his will he's managed to do it trouble as well for another Matthias one that is Luton who we've mentioned that's Antoine Ducan now that was the other car in the incident with Glenn von Berlo and this is happening right now fifth and sixth places and yes in uh, slightly less technical machinery I think it's fair to say because some of the gadgets on the hypercars these days uh, would blow your mind but these are Aurora LMP2 cars and uh, really down to the driver and how hard they hustle them through the tight and twisty stuff stuff of the Aragon circuit it's a proton competition Porsche 
Laborato not too long ago, of course, went through the gravel at the corkscrew. And that would have uh, dirtied his tyres quite a bit and inhaled a load of stones into the grill of that Porsche. It's just the fastest lap of the race from 17th. We just climbed aboard the 37 car. And punished racing it is that go through, because Job Van Uta has caught and passed Paul of Chatan and has leapfrogged as well Oli Jarvis. So Van Uta on that lap from third to first. Those to tail for the lead of this race. This has worked for Paul Lipschatan. Goes to the outside. Jan van Utrecht taking the inside line, coming down to the the hairpin here. And can he make it work? It's a long way around. Van Utrecht gets the corner. They keep out of the sight of each other somehow. Where is Alex Lynn? Right there is the answer, yeah, and is. so is Oli Jarvis. That gap, which I think I called as being, what was that, eight, nine seconds, is 1.5, not for the lead, for the top four, Johnny. Yeah, top four absolutely together. Edex Sport are applauding again, but they... But it's gone, the, not... gone to the front, it's gone to the front. Has he? Yeah, did it through turn one. OK, yes, yeah, so Paul Luc Chatin and Jot van Aerte first and second. Now, that, that was a slightly delayed reaction uh, for that latest move. And uh, even though we've had uh, a retake and then a repass again, Here comes still Alex not Lynn. done. Lynn on the inside line into turn seven will get He's the 25 it. car ahead and into second position on Jop van Outert. Four cars absolutely together, and they will occupy the main straight once again as now darting to the pit lane. Was that Jarvis? Yes, it was with 41 minutes left on the clock, He's, so that is bang on the money. He most certainly is. Might that be an element of, well, he got a pit at the... Oh, is there a problem here with the, with the 34 car? Fire extinguisher being summoned. Can't see the right-hand side. Is that a brake fire? Because it was certainly aimed at that part up. of the car. No light in the belly, no lights, trouble. Extinguisher again being called but not to oh, needed this on this is occasion. Disaster for the car that has dominated this class. A drama here. It's Paul Lepchatan still owes his final stop. 34's out of it. Louis Delatraz is going to be distraught about this. Martin Rump now has a brilliant view of this battle. It does so it's, just. it's for the podium and third, fourth and fifth right together oh. as Anlauer now charging his way down the inside on the brakes and I think Rump might look into this as well because Lancaster can't pull back across the nose of the second Porsche. Oh, can he? No, he can. He slots between the two Proton cars. Well, the green flag is out as so many cars run wide on the exit of Turn 7. I wonder whether there's a slight bit of slack involved in track limits now because it's so tricky to pick the road out in front of you, although you should probably know which way it goes now after, what have we had, 115 laps if you're an LMP2 car. Oliver Jarvis through the darkness emerges there, car number 22, turning left at turn 12, two minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock, a lap time around here. Last time around for Jarvis was 1 minute 53, out of the final few corners comes Oliver Jarvis. United Order Sports yesterday took pole position, a first ever pole for Phil Hansen, and they will win the very first four hours of Aragon as part of round three of the European Le Mans series. United become our third different winner in three races this season as AF Corsa claim victory in LMP2 Pro-Am, cool racing on top in LMP3, and it is Kessel Racing's Ferrari that claims the GTE win. Four hours of fantastic racing. Aragon has been a big success. Lots of happy, smiling faces. The first podium of the season in ELMS for United Auto Sports. And it is on the top step. <laughs> Marina Sato there to greet Oli Jarvis. Phil Hansen joins them. Hot work, but it paid off. Bring it home, don't make any mistakes. The car was amazing. I mean, these guys set it up for me. They did all the hard work. So, you know, Phil with his pole, mega job uh, this morning. Seems crazy that was only this morning. I mean, Marino jumped in with the pros and did an outstanding job. So I just had to make sure I didn't let them down. And a good win for the team after two really tough uh, races to start the season.
Nice you'd win from Edex Sport and Algar Pro, but that podium from last on the grid means that Algar Pro are within three points of leaders to came now. Three races in, three still to go. Aragon has set up a phenomenal end to the LMP2 season. Victory in LMP2 Pro Am to AF Corsa. A big win in Pro Am for Alessio Rivera, Mathieu Vaxivier, and Francois Perodo. It was a tough start for me. We could have done, uh, we were looking good for P2 because car 34 is always so fast. And unfortunately, they had an issue and uh, we seized the opportunity. So, you know, really, really good job from. Uh, my two mates and drivers and, uh, and the team in general. Super happy. Their first win of the season puts AF Corsa ahead of two-time winners racing Team Turkey. AF Corsa's 83 car has not been off the podium all season long. Can Francois Perodo and his crew hang on to that slender advantage? Cool Racing's number 17 team, victory in LMP3. Ajahn Kila, Marcus Siebert and Alejandro Garcia. First in Barcelona, they were third last time out in Le Castellet and now they're on the top step of the podium once more. Today, everybody, Chila, me, and Arcos did the perfect thing. The team didn't, didn't make any mistake, and we just did what we had to do, you know, just uh, drive uh, safely, don't do any mistakes, and at the end we did, and at the end I think we deserve this win since a long, long time ago. The Castellet winners racing Spirit of Le Mans head the chasing pack. The cool racing with a handy advantage of more than one race win after victory in two of the season's first three races. And our GTE winners, the Kessel Racing Car Guy Ferrari. Castle! We won! We won! Grande, grande! Nice race, really nice race. I'm happy, I'm happy. Ravio I'm so happy to be here to have um, uh, a good present for this uh, birthday. So he's uh, 37 years old now. And I, I really have to say many thanks to Kimura-san. He did a good start, a great start, a great race out of trouble. And he was really on the queue fighting for the top three. And then uh, Scott did the rest. He overtake uh, the 66. He pulled away. So amazing job also from uh, all the team Kessel that uh, worked so hard and Ferrari that uh, give a lot of effort. So very happy. Takeshi Kibura, Greg Huffaker and Frederick Shandorf become our third different set of winners in three races. Proton Competition have won the other two but split over two different cars. So we have a great battle at the top of the pile. And Michael Fassbender's recovery drive helped the crew of the 93 Proton Porsche to their first podium of the season. While the crew of number 16 takes second place and a slender points lead to round four in September at the awesome Spa-Francorchamps.